Hey guys, so if you watched my last video, got the uh, 04 Sportsman completed, got some nice upgrades, uh, nice little uh, brush guard to front, uh, it's turned out pretty sweet, and I picked myself up a new project, uh, picked this thing up for about 400 bucks, so story behind this is the guy that I bought it from, his dad had purchased it brand new, and this is a... 95 Polaris Sportsman 400 two stroke. So, I guess the story is every time the guy drove it, dad made him wash it after it was done, which was perfect because look at that frame, everything's clean. Normally, uh, something this old, you start seeing rust everywhere. But the bad part about buying somebody else's project is. You never know what you're going to get. So I guess he started taking it apart just to see what happened. Which I didn't know of when I bought it. And uh, I wanted to know what was going on with it. So I pulled the jug off. And look at that. No piston. But the engine's locked up. So I'm going to be tearing that apart. And uh, one other issue we got. Well, two other issues is the brakes. And uh, this tire is really wobbly. So I don't know if he robbed the bearings out of it or if he broke the uh, broke the shaft. So I'll be finding that out. So I'm going to tear this bad boy down, rebuild the engine, and uh, for you two-stroke fans out there, you get to see how I rebuild one. All right, guys. So I decided to uh, make a part one and a part two to this video. Otherwise, it's going to be really long. Um, the whole time I've been uh, videotaping, I've been getting a lot of questions about uh, bricks. Um, in my preview, I had mentioned that I was going to do a brake job on this, and uh, so I decided I'm going to shoot a video of bleeding the brakes, going through the brake system, and that'll be part two. So uh, I'm going to lay out part one for you guys so you can see how I did the motor. I mainly focused on that part, and part two will be the brakes. Stay tuned to see how I take this apart. Alright, let's start with the basics. I'm going to get everything off, uh, I'm going to get all the components off the engine so I can get it ready to pull. I'm going to start with the uh, clutch. Got my homemade clutch puller. Three quarter inch soda rod. going to get the secondary loose and then I'm going to have to get these fender bolts out. And hopefully they'll be easy to take the back rack off. I have to take the rear plastics out just to get the uh, secondary clutch off. See how hard this bad boy is going to be to take off. Just slide right off, just like that. Which is beautiful. Sometimes they're seized on. So now I can take this cover off. There's uh, four Phillips head screws here. There's tabs, you bend them over. And I believe those are 3 8 inch bolts. Pull that cover off, and you should be able to get to everything pretty easy. Alright, so for them uh, stubborn screws, they make a punch with a Phillips head screwdriver on it. So when you whap on it, it's going to turn and spin. So that works. 
works great on these and uh, base of your uh, carburetor bowl. Those screws are usually pretty stubborn too. Use that tool quite a bit. Screw out, now she's ready to pop off. Ooh down, but it's not off down here. It's one down there. Let's get this thing all cut. That's a 916. Oh, and I gotta disconnect the uh, ground wire too. I got a free. Take that free to either clamp off. Very nice, Bill. We'll get to everything. So there's a bolt on this back side that I could not get. So I figured I'd pull the engine out first and then I could get that nut. Now I could take uh, this cover off and pull my stator out. Alright, flywheel like this is always a chore, especially when it's rusty. So, I'll use my impact. Um, actually, I like this electric impact I got from Harbor Freight. Uh, works pretty good. So, I'll try to pop this off, and that don't work. Um, I'll have to hit it with a hammer. Snap the screw off. Took a little pounding, but I got it. Ooh well, I saved the magnets, that's good. Now, you could have just disconnected the stator from up top, but uh, I'm trying to save myself uh, a headache. So I'm just gonna take the stator bolts off right here. That's shot too. I'll be replacing that. Now I'll get my uh, my punch again and punch those out. Alright, for those of you that ever wanted to see how the oiler was hooked up, I'm pulling the uh, 400 engine out of the Sportsman and I've got the oiler cable I have to take off. I don't know if you can see that in there, but uh, oh wow, huh. I can see what happened with uh, with this motor, why it went the hell. Uh, the tube for the oiler popped off the oiler. Wow. Alright, then you just flip this back, you can pull that cable out. 
I don't see my finger in the way. So you can flip this up and then uh, your cable is in that little notch. Pull it out this way and up and then you can release it. All right, so I got that rusty engine pulled out. Um, seems like uh, the crank and everything turns good, which is good. Uh, counterbalancer seized up. I have a video of me splitting the case halves um, on an actual good engine, and I'll post a link for that video if you're interested in seeing it. Uh, with this particular engine, she's pretty rusty, so this is going to need a little persuasion to get the case halves apart so I can get everything cleaned up. And this is my persuader. So I'm going to pull the bolts off the back side, so they're over here. And I'm going to split this case. Also going to need my other persuader. I tell you, I love this uh, electric impact for getting these stubborn bolts out. Alright, so I got my persuader, a couple pry bars. I got her pulled apart. This thing is really rusty. So the bearing actually rusted on there, which is beautiful because ooh, because those are known to, to go bad, so now I can put a fresh one in. Yeah, I got a, another counterbalancer I could throw in, another crank I can put in. This came right out of the bearing. Yeah, so this should be an interesting build. So what happens when you drive through uh, big mud puddles. And just like that, it's built. So. Took the uh, rusty counterbalancer out. I put a new, uh, or I, I put a used counterbalancer in. Put a new bearing in. Put new seals in. See, I got new seals there. And uh, I actually did put a different crank in. I had a, a parts engine laying around, which was good. Uh, actually, I've got like seven parts engines laying around. So, yep, shell turns free like she should. Now, just got to order a piston. And uh, that jug that uh, I got, I got lucky on because the guy just freshly bored it out before the uh, before water got in the engine and uh, rusted up the counterbalancer. So I don't have to worry about the cylinder at all. Maybe just throw a honing stone through it, get the new piston, get this bad boy back together, and I can get the sportsman fired up. Here's the cylinder. Looks really clean. It's not even any scratches. So I'm going to post a link that you'll see pretty quick on how to rebuild one of these engines, tear it down and completely rebuild it. Uh, I'm not going to go through that right now because this video would be really long. So stay tuned and I'll show you how I put the piston and the jug back together. Okay, so I got a good clean cylinder. And uh, I'm just going to take my honing stones and clean up the cylinder a little bit before I put the new piston. Now, uh, I go with this style with a, with a drill. Uh, there's the, uh, the ones that have the little balls on the end. that They work uh, actually a little better. They, they say to be careful with this style because you could uh, damage the bottom of the jug. Um, I've never had a problem with that. You just got to be careful. So, spray a little cutting oil. And spray the inside of the test now. I got a bucket underneath here, right? Put it in there and go go slowly about ten times. Going up and down. You can 
clean everything up nice. Let's put some nice etches into the uh, cylinder walls. There you go. They should clean up really nice. Now it's going to have uh, some nice cross hatching for uh, my new piston. So this is what you want. Put a nice crisscross pattern in your cylinder wall so your uh, piston rings will seat nicely. You don't want it smooth because uh, then you'll just burn up your piston rings right away. I'm not going to use this head. I put a straight edge over it, hang it up to the light. You can see light clear as day through there. You can see how warped the head got. So I have no plans for using this. Um, I could bring it to a machine shop and have it resurfaced. Or if you've uh, seen some of my videos, um, I've resurfaced some myself. I got this thing used online. Uh, it's a hot seat. It's nice and level. Uh, help with cooling. Uh, I'm sure you could find them on uh, eBay if you looked. Um, but yeah, this should uh, have a nice flat surface and uh, the head gasket should seal perfectly. And now before you put your piston in, you want to check your ring gap. So I'm just going to put this right here. And I'm going to check my gap. What's the gap? I'm not going to tell you. You have to read the directions. Ha <laughs> ha! So check your gap. Put your rings on. Um, your rings should say top on it. So that's the way you want to install it on the piston. And now she should be ready to install. Alright, so I got my piston ready to have the rings put on. Uh, if you notice, I don't know if you're going to be able to see in the camera. I'll try to see the EX. That indicates which way the piston will go in. So that means exhaust. So that'll point towards the exhaust port. So putting the rings on isn't too terrible. I mean, you could use a, a ring expander. I just use my, my fingers. And there are two little notches in the piston. One here and one here. And that's where you line up your uh, end gaps for the, the piston rings. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. And you want to try to do this without scratching up the piston. There, see that wasn't too bad. Like I said, this is the worst top on there. Put it on upside down, that's going to be a bad thing. Try not to scratch the side of the piston when you do that. Here we go. And it locks in that, that spot there. And right here. Now I can go ahead and install my piston. Another indication if you don't have any markings on top of the piston, where these little, uh, little stoppers are for your ring gap, that's always going to be on the intake side. And the holes will be on the intake side. So if there's no markings and you're not for sure, I mean, there's no holes on this side. So that's going to be your intake side. So I'll go ahead and put our first clip in. Probably should have did that first. When you put it in, you want to make sure the opening isn't there. You want it to overlap that notch. And so this is a little bit of a chore. I'll try to do this without scratching the piston or having the, uh, the pin go flying. There we go. Here. Now if you ever need to get it out, you just push on this and it'll pop right out.
put a rag over this so you don't lose the clip in the block. That's why you want the oil on the inside so it slides in nice. Don't forget your hose. Alright, so before I install my head gasket, uh, I want to show you guys a little tip. Um, what's the proper way to install your head gasket? Now, I've done uh, quite a few of these engines and I've always lined up the gasket with this tab. But I want to show you something interesting. So, you got that tab, lines up with that. Now, I didn't know this. I always saw these goofy little marks here, and uh, wasn't quite sure what the what they were for. If it was for coolant to go through, and uh, oddly enough, if you flip it over, what does that say? Up. <laughs> so, go ahead and put that on there. It lines up with that tab with that part on the the head. It says up. And now you can go ahead and install your your head. Like I said, I got a, a nice aluminum one. I'm gonna replace my my warped one with. And uh, the next step, um, while I am installing the engine, I'm not gonna put it in place. I'm gonna turn it on its side, and we're gonna go ahead and get that oiler cable in place and adjust it before I mount the engine. Only because it's so much easier. Uh, instead of working uh, from the front of the ATV. Alright, so this is how you install your uh, oiler cable and where to set it. Uh, like I said, I, I like to do this outside of the, the ATV so I got the engine sitting on the footboard. You guys, another quick tip. You know, everybody uh, seals the crap out of the uh, pull start cover so water doesn't get in the engine. But everybody seems to forget about the oiler. I mean, you got this cover on, you know, you just got a rubber seal through here. Um, you know, I would recommend replacing it or, you know, you could take a, a gasket sealer and seal that up. Because if you're riding through puddles and water, guess what? Water's going to get in here and it'll somehow seep into your counterbalancer and it'll rust up the counterbalancer. Kind of like what happened with this one. So, I'm just going to throw this on here for now, but, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and seal that up real good. So if you remember in the beginning of the video, I had to pull the motor out from the other side because that uh, chain cover nut was rusted on and I couldn't get to it because um, the engine was in the way. So now that I had the engine out, I was able to get on the back side of this, get that bolt out. I got the chain out of the way. So now I'm going to be able to, to um, mount the be able to install the engine the way I want to. I also got the... Uh, the shifter lovers out of the way as well. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this in, get her bolted down, and then uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the head gasket. Right, so I'm put my motor, put my bottom motor mount in now, and I've already got my top one in place. That's pretty easy, and then the one that goes there. All right, let's go ahead and install that head gasket. Like I said, I uh, I like to mount the engine in the ATV only because it'll hold the engine in place while I'm torquing everything down.
So here's the new gasket. This is the word up on it. Line the tab up with that. Don't want to put that in the wrong way. I got my aluminum head I'm going to put on there. The torque sequence is one, two, three, four, five, six, at 18 to 22 foot pounds. So I got my hoses hooked up. Now I'm putting the stator in place, and when you do that, don't forget there's a little mark here, and that lines up with the little mark on the case. And then uh, you can run your wires around and hook them back up. So before I install the flywheel, I don't know if you remember in uh, the beginning of the video, everything was all pretty rusty and crusty. So I'm going to take uh, a drill with a wire wheel clean it up especially want to make sure I get this part right here cleaned up because that's where your pickup coil uh, reads and uh, triggers your spark plug I'll show you what I mean since that little bump goes past your trigger coil which is right here goes up to your spark plug fires your spark plug at the right timing so you also want to make sure this is all nice and clean I'm going to go ahead and take the wire wheel, clean this up really nice. i got my engine installed, I've got the stator wire all hooked up. Uh, if you've never uh, disconnected the stator, there's a wire that goes here. It's uh, yellow and red. You've got your two plugs here, and uh, all the wires are matching. You've got a ground wire that comes in here, and then, uh, of course, you've got your three wires that go into your rectifier so right now I'm uh, topping off the coolant right on top of the head there's a little bolt that comes out you screw it out and that lets the air um, rush out of the coolant lines as you're filling the fluid oh, see it a little bit squirted out so that means I'm almost to the top so basically as I'm filling the radiator the air in the lines is pushing through there and once coolant starts trickling out of there I'm going to close that I'll show you what I mean topping this off right now let's see if any coolant comes out yep, it's just coming out I'm going to go ahead and close that off it bleeds all the air out of your your coolant lines. If you got a, a air pocket in there, there's a, a chance you'll have cooling issues. So I thought I'd show you that quick tip. Um, basically, uh, all I got left to do is hook up the exhaust. I'm just going to hook up that makeshift exhaust the guy had on here. And uh, hook the fuel lines up. And this baby should be ready to fire. Oh yeah, and put the spark plug in. So I got my engine all ready to fire up, and uh, you see my goofy exhaust system here. Uh, if you see that, don't do that. Uh, somebody did that. I don't know. Have a straight pipe, make it louder. Uh, two strokes, they get really hot. There's a reason why there's a thick exhaust on there. Uh, <clears throat> so I will be getting a different exhaust. But uh, so here's what I got going on. So I got the engine all back together, she pops, she fires for a couple seconds, and then it dies. I did not clean the carb, and, because I wanted to see what it would do. And I also noticed my kill switch is really, it was really stiff, I couldn't even move it before. I started working it back and forth to get the corrosion off of it. 
So one of two things are going on. Um, my kill switch is so corroded that it's acting like it's shutting off right away. So I am going to pull the black wire on the CDI. Um, there's your CDI box right here. Follow that black wire around. It comes up here and you can disconnect it. And uh, just to kind of verify that that's not the issue. Um, the other issue is um, I will be re uh, cleaning the carburetor, but I just wanted to see what it would do. The uh, needle and seats in the float bowl uh, are not closing all the way. So gas is draining out the overflow tube and out of my hose. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, if you see that going on um, and you don't shut your fuel off, all that fuel is going to dump right into your engine and um, it'll cause it to lock up on you. Um, hydro locking is what they call it. Um, so there is a screw at the bottom of the case. You can uh, open that up, drain the case if you do have fuel in there. So I'm going to uh, do two different tests. One, I'm going to disconnect the black wire. And the other, I have a spare carburetor laying around with the throttle. Oh, that was another thing too. The choke doesn't open all the way either. It's stiff. So that might be part of my issue too. So I'm guessing it's a carburetor issue, but it could be the kill switch also. So I'm going to swap out that carb and see what happens. Put the new carb on. Plug this in. Okay, kill switch works, so it was the carb. Alright, so I got everything running decent. Just gonna get our buttoned up, put back together, and um, I'm gonna do uh, part two on the brakes. So stay tuned for the next video.